1994. A primetime investigation. They were Hitler's henchmen. Now, for the first time, Argentina has opened its secret files on the Nazis. The startling truth about how many were taken in and given protection. We sent some 60,000 fugitive Nazi war criminals to Argentina. Tonight, Sam Donaldson gives you new details about how they escaped with the help of the Vatican and the U.S. government. And he travels from Rome to Buenos Aires to the remote Andes to track down fugitive Nazis who've been living in Argentina all these years. This former Gestapo officer accused of torture and murder. Who killed civilians in the cave? No, no, no. That was us. I think that was ordered by our command. But orders are not an excuse. Prime time. Now from Washington, Sam Donaldson. Good evening. The movie Schindler's List has rekindled the horror of Nazi Germany for Americans. But if you think it all ended some 50 years ago, you're wrong. Tonight, we're going to tell the story of how thousands of suspected Nazi war criminals escaped justice, show you where many of them are living comfortably today, and we'll bring you face to face with a former Gestapo officer who explains his crimes by saying, I was just following orders. It is a chilling story of how Nazi killers live on, but an important one to know. As the philosopher George Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. In the beginning, there was a madman. Adolf Hitler's Third Reich ruled the continent of Europe. Powerful, arrogant, murderous. But in the end, it all came crashing down. As the Soviets closed in on the Fuhrer bunker in Berlin, Hitler shot himself. His mistress, Eva Braun, took poison. Propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels first poisoned his six children, then he and his wife poisoned themselves. But what of the others who served Hitler and his murderous regime? Some were brought to trial at Nuremberg and elsewhere. But not all. Many of them just disappeared. As it turns out, it was a disappearance well planned. Argentina, South America. It was a country off the beaten path in the mid-1940s with its own burgeoning Nazi movement. And with a former army colonel named Juan Perón in charge, a country ready to play a pivotal role in providing a safe haven for the Nazis. How many? We do not know the size of the problem. Are we talking hundreds? Are we talking thousands? I'm afraid that may be in the thousands. Last December, Argentine Foreign Minister Guido de Tella took a giant step toward exposing the truth when he signed this decree, opening the secret files of government agencies, including the federal police and the foreign ministry. Now, after all these years, the world can finally see what Argentina did. The visas were handed out just wholesale, with no questions asked. There was a bit of that, yes. So the government knew that it was giving visas, allowing Nazi war criminals to come to Argentina. Some people in government certainly did. These are the archives of Argentine immigration. Everyone who registered into the country is listed here. After the war, when the Nazis began flooding in, some were so bold as to use their own names. Here's an entry from June of 1948. Schroeder, Eric Emil, says he was an engineer. Eric Schroeder was the Gestapo chief of Portugal. Some, of course, didn't use their own names. Here's an entry from July of 1950. Clement Ricardo says he was a technician. That's Adolf Eichmann, the Nazi who supervised the extermination of the Jews. And this one from June of 1949, at the very bottom of the page, here's the name, Gregor Helmut, who says he was a mechanic. Who was this mechanic? Let's see. Gregor lived in various Buenos Aires suburbs. For a time, he had a jungle hideaway nearby. But as the newly opened federal police records show, he felt safe enough after a few years to re-register under his real name. Jose Mengele, Dr. Joseph Mengele. 
he was no mechanic. At Auschwitz, they called him the angel of death. He helped select those who would live and die. He tortured and murdered children, particularly twins, with his medical experiments. Mengele is believed to have died in 1979 in Brazil. But we now have proof for the first time that the Argentine authorities knew about his activities in their country and protected him. There you can see his activities here in the country, how he lived with such impunity. When the archives were open, Dr. Beatrice Gurevich, research director for Jewish organizations in Buenos Aires, set to work gathering data on Nazi war criminals like Mengele. This is a document from the federal police. Those are Mengele's fingerprints? These are Mengele's fingerprints. They had him on file? Yes, of course. And the argument for not extradicting him was that Argentine didn't extradict people for political crimes. Mengele? Political crimes? So it is said in the document. Well, Dr. Mengele was one of the great butchers of all times. That was the argument. Why are you so astonished about this? This is absence of moral responsibility. But this absence of moral responsibility was not Argentina's alone. Nazi war criminals needed help to escape Europe. They got it here in Rome, beginning with two highly unlikely sources, the intelligence services of Britain and the United States. They saved tens of thousands of Nazis in order to use them against the Soviets. Peter Tompkins should know. He was a wartime spy working undercover in Rome for the American OSS, predecessor of the CIA. Richard Helms ran the Dirty Tricks Department after the Bay of Pigs and became director of Central Intelligence in 1966. He destroyed the archive on MK Ultra when he left in 1972 and successfully covered up the crimes of MK Ultra. Helms was a product of the Eastern Establishment. His grandfather was president of the Federal Reserve. Helms, like Gottlieb, was a Machiavellian character who used paperclip scientists and would stop at nothing to win. He advocated low-intensity warfare, transmitting strategic subliminal messages to the brains of enemy populations and the use of high frequencies to affect memory and the unconscious mind. In 1964, he wrote a memo to the Warren Commission where he mentions biological radio communication. Quote, Cybernetics can be used in molding of a child's character, the inculcation of knowledge and techniques, the amassing of experience, the establishment of social behavior patterns, all functions which can be summarized as control of the growth processes of the individual. In 1953, MK Ultra relied on LSD, but by the 1960s the emphasis had changed to biological radio communication. MK Ultra had 149 subprojects that encompassed nearly every aspect of human behavior and social science. In the 1977 Senate hearings, former CIA director Admiral Stansfield Turner stated that the program took place at 80 institutions, including 44 universities, 15 private companies, 12 hospitals, and 3 prisons. MK Ultra Subproject 119 was the foundation of all non lethal weapons programs currently active and included a summary of five areas, one of which is entitled Techniques of Activation of the Human Organism by Remote Electronic Means. This memo was dated August 17, 1960, and when viewed with other evidence that was not destroyed, shows significant interest in radio frequency weapons and direct control of human behavior at a distance. By 1960, the CIA dropped emphasis on the use of LSD in favor of electronic influence. This aspect of the research is where the greatest modern emphasis has been, rather than chemical or biological agents, both of which violate existing treaties and leave physical traces. 
Dr. Stephen Aldrich took control of the Office of Research and Development in 1962 from Dr. Sidney Gottlieb. Aldrich started Operation Often, an investigation into the occult with the help of Houston sorceress Sybil Leake. CIA behaviorists carefully studied every aspect of the occult underground. The Scientific Engineering Institute, SEI, was a CIA cutout that had been set up in 1956 to study radar. In 1962, SEI set up a lab to study the effects of electrodes deep in the brain. In 1972, SEI also sponsored a course at the University of South Carolina in rituals of demonology and voodoo. Dr. Aldrich was an MKUltra programmer who focused on remote brain manipulation and the occult, the twin threads that run through SEI Corporation. In 1962, a CIA manual focused on radio hypnotic intracerebral control, RHIC, which was developed by the Pentagon. Quote, when a part of your brain receives a tiny electrical impulse from outside sources such as vision, hearing, etc., an emotion is produced. Anger at the sight of a gang of boys beating an old woman, for example. The same emotions of anger can be created by artificial radio signals sent to your brain by a controller. You could instantly feel the same white-hot anger without any apparent reason." Unquote. Another term, electronic dissolution of memory, EDOM, refers to the ability to erase memory at a distance. Sometime in late 1980, Colonel Paul E. Vallely the commander of the 7th Psychological Operations Group, United States Army Reserve, Presidio of San Francisco, California, co-authored a discussion paper which was received wide and controversial attention within the U.S. military, particularly within special operations community. The paper was titled, From PSYOP to Mind War, The Psychology of Victory, and it presented a Machiavellian scheme for waging perpetual psychological warfare against friend and enemy populations alike, and even against the American people. The Mind War paper was provoked by an article by Lieutenant Colonel John Alexander, which appeared in the 1980 edition of Military Review, advocating the introduction of ESP, extrasensory perception, telepathic behavior modification, parapsychology, psychokinesis, mind over matter, remote viewing, out-of-body experiences, and other new age and occult practices into U.S. military intelligence. Alexander's paper was titled, The New Mental Battlefield, Beam Me Up, Spock. General Mike Aquino wrote From PSYOP to Mind War with Colonel Paul E. Vallely, The Psychology of Victory. Aquino's thesis stated that enemy populations could be subdued by inflicting a state of psychological terror and feelings of imminent destruction. Shock and awe, in other words. He discusses the use of psychotronic weapons or electronic weapons that influence the mind. Capitulation could be induced without firing a shot by using signals piggybacked on broadcasts of radio, TV, microwave com and microwave communications to influence through subliminal suggestion holograms voice to skull and silent sound technologies to manipulate the feelings and thoughts of the target population during the nineteen sixties and seventies he was prominent in the church of satan and a close friend of anton levey until he started his own church of set anton levey was the originator of the Church of Satan. A police intelligence report dated July 1, 1980 reads, quote, The Church of Set is a group of hundreds of members that operates on a national level. Aquino is the official head of the organization and rules through a council of nine, who are in fact his lieutenants. End quote. 
At least two mem members of the Council of Nine at that time were members of Army Intelligence. In the late 1980s, Aquino was accused by the San Francisco Police Department of being involved in a satanic child molestation ring centered on the Presidio military base where Aquino was stationed at the time. Probable victims were numbered at 68, many of whom had contracted venereal disease. Twenty-two families filed $66 million in claims against the Army, claiming that criminal charges against Aquino were dropped due to pressure from the Army. Aquino reportedly rented the German castle where the Nazi SS was formed and reenacted the secret ceremony among fellow spooks decked out in full Nazi regalia. General Aquino is now one of the highest ranking officers in the NSA. The Strategic Studies Institute of the U.S. Army War College produced a paper in 1994 entitled The Revolution in Military Affairs and Conflict Short of War. A Revolution in Military Affairs, RMA, is mentioned that will not only change the nature of warfare but also alter the global geopolitical balance of power. An example of a revolution in military affairs is the invention of gunpowder or atomic weapons, in short, an innovation that turns the world upside down. The authors of this paper, Metz and Kivit, claim behavior modification is a key component of peace enforcement, and modification will be directed at the American people. This will take place, the authors state, through directed energy systems, whose primary advantage is deniability. They are straightforward about the unlimited possibilities inherent inherent in, per in perception molding through the use of psychotechnologies. Anyone who objects to this kind of mind warping will be identified using comprehensive interagency integrated databases, unquote, then categorized into, quote, computerized personality simulations, which will be used to develop, tailor, and focus psychological campaigns for each, unquote. New World Vistas a book published in 1996 by the U.S. Air Force Advisory Board which discusses biological process control. We will have achieved a clear understanding of how the human brain works, how it really controls the various functions of the body, and how it can be manipulated both negatively and positively. One can envision the development of electromagnetic energy sources, the output of which can be pulsed shaped and focused that can couple with the human body in a fashion that will allow one to prevent voluntary muscular movements, control emotions and thus actions, produce sleep, transmit suggestions, interfere with both short-term and long-term memory, produce an experience set, and delete an experience set. It would appear, also appear possible to create high-fidelity speech in the human body raising the possibility of covert suggestion and psychological direction. When a high-power microwave pulse in the gigahertz range strikes the human body, a very small temperature perturbation occurs. This is associated with a sudden expansion of the slightly heated tissue. This expansion is fast enough to produce an acoustic wave. If a pulse stream is used, it should be possible to create an internal acoustic field in the 5 to 15 kilohertz range, which is audible. Thus it may be able to talk to selected adversaries in a fashion that will be most disturbing to them." Unquote. It also discussed in the creation and broadcasting of alternate realities. The, creation, the concept of imprinting and experience set is highly speculative, but nonetheless highly exciting. Ultra-short pulse scattering through the human brain can result in reflected signals that, began, that can be used to construct a reliable estimate of the degree of central nervous system arousal. The concept behind the remote EEG is to scatter off of action potentials or ensembles of action potentials in major central nervous system tracks. Assuming we will understand how our skills are imprinted and recalled, it might be possible to take this concept one step further and duplicate the experience set in another individual." Unquote. A 1996 military paper entitled Information Operations, A New Warfighting Capability, 
written for the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, designed to identify what is required for the U.S. to remain, quote, the dominant air and space force in the future. The paper asserts that, quote, for continued success as a superpower, the key is information dominance. Part of this dominance will be the development of a Space Satellite Linked Information Integration Center, or IIC, which will act as a central information processing and control center. The IIC will monitor people who have been implanted with, quote, microscopic brain chip. The brain chip performs two functions. First, it links the individual to the IIC, creating a seamless interface between the user and the information resources, in-time collection data, and archival databases. In essence, the chip relays the processed information from the IIC to the user. Second, the chip creates a computer-generated gener mental visualization. Quote, implanting things in people raises ethical and public relations issues, unquote. In the future, the civilian population will likely accept an implanted microscopic microchip that, will allow, that allows military members to defend vital national interests, unquote. The paper goes on to note that the California Institute of Technology has developed an energy-efficient computer chip which emulates the analog thinking of the, thinking of the human brain. When this capa capability is fully mature, this chip could provide the baseline for a brain implant hooked to all the sensory segments of the brain, not just the eyes.